today's podcast about the four relationships we have in one. I'm going to be focusing on the couple relationship, relationship where I have a relationship with you and you have a relationship with me. And this can be our partner, our mum and dad, brother and sister and our friends. This internal relationship is very important. While it's very important for us to also get the individual one, I have a relationship with myself and I do all my own things and he does or she does or mum does. This middle one is, I think, where there can be quite a lot of conflict. If I'm in a relationship with you, that means in that relationship I'm prioritising the relationship. I'm not necessarily prioritising myself. I'm prioritising both of us because we're both in it. And if you're in a relationship with me, you're doing likewise, hopefully. <laughs> you're prioritising me and you and the relationship. And that's the order it's supposed to work. However, that's not the order it usually does work. Usually you'll find, if you're starting to have trouble, if the individual ones are working well and you're still having trouble, it'll be here. Either you're not really in this couple or two, two of you in the relationship, you're not invested, you're not giving time to it, you're not giving uh, space for it, you're not prioritising it when you're in it, you're prioritising other things, often yourself, putting your own needs first, or the other person is doing the same there needs to be equal investment in these. So I have to invest a certain amount in the relationship with you and then you invest a certain amount in the relationship with me. For it to be healthy, we have to have equal investment or very, very close. I didn't really understand what was going on in lots of my relationships, why they weren't working, until I was shown this and given this information. And once I sort of realised this, it all made sense. If you are in the, the two relationships, and they're working, you will feel happy, you will feel nourished, and you will feel balanced. And emotionally, it will be very, very satisfying. And the person will be giving you attention, and you'll be giving them attention, and you talk to each other, and the communication is open. It's really lovely. It's a really lovely, when the two of them are working, it's really quite beautiful. On the downside, if only one of you is actually in the, that relationship, and the other one's actually not present in the other relationship with you, it's going to be awful and you're not going to feel nourished. That's the first feeling I think you can look at. If you're not feeling nourished, it's because they're not actually giving anything in their relationship with you. It's still all about them or they're just not present. I've been with people who I was in the relationship with them and when we were together, spending time or talking, I was present, I was really in it. But I knew that they, when they were in the relationship with me, they weren't present, they weren't focused they weren't nourishing or nurturing it in any way they might have been sitting in the room sometimes but they weren't there and that's how you'll feel it they're not actually present this is disastrous for couple relationships it's really really bad for those relationships and it will eat away and erode it but once you understand it you can maybe talk to the other person if you're the person who is being I call neglected and they're not prioritising you in the relationship, you can speak about that. If you're the person who's not really in it and you realise you're actually not really in that relationship with them, you do all your own stuff and then you just be there but you're not there, you need to step up if you want it to work. Otherwise, it's all going to fall away. You, you've got to have the four relationships all working, two individuals, two couple. If they're not working, it's never going to work. It's always going to be a big hole somewhere. I remember explaining to somebody very clearly who I was having trouble in this area and I just said to them, in my relationship with you, I put you first. But in your relationship with me, you put you first. You're not putting me in the relationship first. And even though it was very succinct and to me it was like, oh, wow, that really explained it, the other person didn't really want to do it. The signs that they're not really in the relationship with you can be they're not actually there, literally, they're not there. They're not spending any time with you. They hardly call or ring. They don't get back to texts. They don't answer you. The next thing is that if you are together, they're not present. So they're thinking about something else or they're trying to do the chores or they're on the computer and they're not actually there with you. So when you're trying to be together, it's like, it's like being with a ghost. It's like living with a phantom. They're not present. You can't feel them. And this is different to someone being shy or an introvert. That's a completely different feeling. 
because you'll still feel the run backwards and forwards with those people. The other thing that you'll notice is that there won't be a lot of love given. There won't be much expression about their relationship and the love in the relationship. They won't make plans for the relationship either, or forward plans. They don't want to plan ahead because they're not really in the relationship with you. Not to the degree you might be. And you might find you're in the reverse. You're not really in that relationship with them and so you don't want to plan ahead and lock yourself into something you don't want to be doing. These two areas are very important to work on if you want to make your relationship last with mostly anyone. It can also happen in families and with your friends, people who are really flaky and you both have the individual things going, but when it comes to meeting or going out, they keep putting you off, they keep cancelling, they change the plans, they put other people in front of you, so you're supposed to go out, but now someone else rang them and it's a better deal, so they're going to go with them. These are really unhealthy relationships. And kind of a lot of rejection comes with that as well. And if you're doing that, just stop doing it. Be honest with the person. If you don't really want to be with them, that's okay. But make it an acquaintance. Don't pretend it's a friendship now. The way to mend it is to talk to the people concerned, if you want to, about they're not making equal investment. And I think if you have a good relationship, you can speak this way and tell them what you need. Explain what you need in the relationship. I need this, this, this and this. And then you ask them, what do you need? And try and meet each other's needs. That's a very simple way to do it. If you feel that you've really done that and it's not working, then it's up to you what you do, whether you stay in it. I don't think anything can replace that in a relationship. If I've got a friend, Amanda, and the couple part, the two of us, isn't working because she doesn't want to catch up much or she keeps following me off, it's never going to really work and I'm just going to get cranky and in the end I'll probably just move away. It'll probably be just become untenable for me and you would find the same thing. These two areas are very important. I think if you're with a selfish person, you're going to have trouble in this bit because they like the two individual things because they get to do what they want. But when it comes to the middle one, the couple one, the two of you, um, putting a relationship and the other person first, they will continue to be selfish that's where you'll have trouble with selfish people. So if your friend or partner or family are selfish, in that double relationship you're going to have trouble. You can actually accept it and know where the hole is, but then don't feed so much into it perhaps from your point of view. And don't set yourself up for rejection, making times that they won't meet or sending, having to send full texts. Just send the one if they don't answer, well, so be it. I think you need to make boundaries then if you're finding you're in these relationships. I'm hoping this start, starts to make sense to you and gives you clarity. It gave me a lot of clarity. I started to really understand what was happening. It explained to me why the relationships that I were in were not satisfying and nurturing and verged a little bit on abuse at times, I thought. Control, controllers will also be difficult. They're fine in the individual ones, even though they might want to control you there and they want to have the individual one, they don't want you to have it. Or they're controlling in the sense that they just won't give you what you want in the double relationship. And you might want to have a look at that if the friend or family members or partner are controlling. And as we said earlier, selfish, you might really have trouble with them. Think about it. Think about what you want where you want to put your boundaries, what you're prepared to accept and not accept, but now understand it, why it's not working. It's not your fault, particularly if you are the one investing in the double relationship, the couple relationship, and you're always the one making all the investment and they're not investing back. I hope you enjoyed that talk today. I found this stuff really interesting and very revealing for me and everything started to make much more sense. So I'm sending you lots of love and I hope you have a good relationship week.